Houdini 21 is out and there is a ton of really awesome new features. Let's look at the new Maps Baker in Copernicus. So I'm gonna drop down a SOP create. This project file along with all of the other project files are gonna be available on Patreon. You can grab them on there if you would like to get up to speed with all of the new stuff on Houdini 21. I will also be posting some exclusive stuff on there. So if you don't wanna miss that, then grab that and take a look at all of that. But let's start off, we're gonna drop down a pig head. Now, before I go any further into this, I want to just point out that Houdini 21 is sort of like a culmination of a few updates, it seems. This is really where they they really polished off a lot of different systems and things, and things really kind of start to work together. And there's a bunch of nodes in here that start to really work together. And we're going to have to take a look at some of them in order to make this work. So we're going to drop down this pig head and we're going to drop down a VDB from polygons. I'm just going to try to get a mesh that's a little bit higher resolution here that we can displace. Let's do a VDB smooth as well, followed by a convert VDB. Now, obviously you'd want to, you want to use whatever mesh that you're trying to bake down to a, um, a lower poly but I'm just using the pig head as an example here so that everyone has you know, the model and everything. So we have this convert VDB. Let's drop down a mountain node and give this some displacement. I'm gonna drop down our amplitude here. Let's come in here. Let's play around with this element size as well. Doesn't need to be super perfect. Uh, just something to kind of like displace our texture and give it some sort of like a, a higher poly look to it. So in order for this to work for the, uh, in Copernicus, we need to have a high poly and a low poly. But let's jump over into a cop net here. And let's drop down, if we start to type in bake, we have this bake geometry textures, which is just the node by itself. And then we have this bake setup, which is a recipe that's going to drop down some different things for us. So I'm not going to use a cage, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. But you can see we need an import here for the low poly and the high poly. So let's come in here and let's drop down a null. Not for our crop net. Let's call this out. And we'll say this is the high poly. Now we also are going to need a low poly. So let's make a duplicate of this and we'll do low poly. And we're going to use the quadri measure, which has also gotten an update in 20 point or 21 as well. So we'll take this, we'll drop this on here, give this a second to cook here, and we get a much lower resolution mesh. Let's maybe up the polygon count a little bit more than that. We are getting some issues here. I think that is due to our, our noise. Let's play around with this as well. Maybe we'll leave it a little bit higher there. That should be good. Let's look again at our quadri mesh here. And yeah, we, we still have this issue. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now. This isn't too much of a concern. I guess we can up it a little bit more. Maybe we'll go to like 40,000. It's still a pretty high poly uh, model that we have here, but that should be good enough. So let's take this. We're going to cop I'm gonna copy this null here for the out high poly. I'm going to paste that into the SOP path, and then we can... Do the same thing here and just change this to low poly. Now we have our high poly and our low poly being brought in here. And we can bake this into our geometry textures. Now, when we look at this, we have a error. So if we look at this, it says SOP creates um, error, no UV attribute on the low resolution geometry. So it's unable to cook. So it does need UVs. So let's go ahead and rectify that using a new node. 
which we're going to start off by scattering some points onto our mesh here. So we'll take this and I'm going to set this to like, do like five points here. And then we're going to do a UV flatten from points, which is new to Houdini 21 as well. I'm going to wire in our geometry into the first input, the scatter into the second input. And if we look here, if we toggle on our UVs, we need to change this point source from first input to second input. And then it's going to give us some UVs. And you can see it's super, super quick. If I jump over to the UV viewport, you can see what we get here with this. So it does a pretty good job of creating some UVs for us. I'm going to ignore that error for now. It's not too big of an issue. And we can jump back to our cop net. So if I look here now, we have low resolution geometry has no normal attribute. So that's the other thing that it is going to need, which is really easy to create. Just drop down a normal node and then we jump back to our cop net and bang, we have our textures baked out here. And we can look at the different passes. So by default, the only ones that are checked, we can see here, we have our tangent space normal, we have our ambient occlusion, we have an alpha. So if I look at our outputs here, we can go to occlusion, and you can see that we get this occlusion pass. If I go to our alpha, get our alpha. So let's go back to our normal here. Let's drop down a preview material. So we can see this on our low resolution geometry wire that into our geo input and then our normals, we can wire that into the normal input here. And then I'm going to just drop down a constant and let's set this to be an RGB and we're going to set this to a more grayish color here. And we'll set that for our base color. And let me just make that a little bit brighter. And here you can see what we have for our bake. So if I go ahead and just, oops, not that one, just delete out our normal. This is our mesh without that, without the normals baked in. And then our normals applied. You see, we get all that detail coming back. So it does a really good job. We have the ability to use optics if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Otherwise, you can use Embry and it's already done cooking for that as well. So it's, you know, super, super quick to bake things out. And you can out uh, you can output some other things as well. You can you know, have some different settings for all of the different nodes here. We have different sample settings. We have curvature settings. So let's output, let's output all of the maps here. You can see that what we can get. And then we also have the ability to output um, custom attributes as well. So if I look here, this is our normal pass. Let's go ahead, press D and get rid of that background. And I'm also gonna set this to be a dark background. And if I go through here, look at our edge normal, gotta enable that. You can see that's what we get for that. World normal, we need to enable that. World space right here, world normal and position. So if I come down to position, get our position, occlusion, we already looked at that. We have our curvature. We have our edge, cavity, thickness, height. Um, we're not gonna have uh, much of, uh, let's see, we should be able to, we should have some height. Um, let's skip that for now. We have our alpha and then we have the ability to look at our, our custom attributes as well. But we have all of this um, all in one node. Super, super awesome um, that this is in here now. This is going to be great for for the game developers. So uh, just a kind of a alternative to using Substance Designer or like, um, I don't know, um, Forget, I'm drawing a blank on the other ones. Like, so I wouldn't say it's really a replacement for a Substance Painter necessarily because we don't have the ability to to paint 
really well inside of Copernicus yet. Uh, I'm sure that's probably something that's coming, but uh, really COPS is kind of a replacement for Substance Designer, if you ask me. But we have the ability to, uh, to bake out all these maps and get some really awesome things. This is a node that's also going to be needed for some other things that are new in COPS that we'll be taking a look at, specifically um, the triplanar nodes. So we'll look at that here in in the next video, I guess, probably. And we'll continue to look at the new stuff inside of Houdini 21 as well. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you want to grab the project file, it is going to be available on Patreon. You can grab it on there and we'll be looking at some exclusive stuff on there as well. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.